Ask Reddit by alarming Basil 6205. People who cut off their family, what did they to you? Grew up in an explosive and abusive household. When I was finally able to move out I started slowing distancing myself. Mom went off the deep end. Started out accusing me of sleeping with every single person I know. Yes, every person. Coming up with outlandish stories for why I was an awful person. Threatening suicide. When I cut her off completely she started stalking me. I changed my number and moved to a new state. I did not give anyone, including my brother, my new home address, and started receiving cards in the mail from her last year. Legal action is probably called for. I was 10 years old. I was given to a 34 year old man to be his third wife. My parents were so happy because it was a great honor to them that I was chosen out of all of the girls there to be with the man that was second in charge. I was smuggled out a month before my 13th birthday. Was deprogrammed. Tried to end my own life when I was 16 BC of what I went through. I'm still alive. I'll be 49 this year. I don't know if my parents are even alive. Deleted. I found out my dad wasn't really my dad, and then my mother proceeded to lie about what actually happened. I experienced a childhood full of physical and amp, verbal abuse, but he never laid a hand on my sisters now I know why. I corroborated the truth via other family members before cutting off all contact with mom and amp, dad, still close with sisters though. It always amazes me when I hear stories about a parent letting their child get abused just so they can stay with some shitty person. I'm so sorry. My cousin had addiction problems and just burned every bridge in our family. Used to be we'd buy him food and stuff he needs instead of just giving him money because it'd go straight to more drugs but he eventually became so toxic we couldn't even do that. Did he eventually sort his shit out? My father was an abusive alcoholic who left us when I was a teen after several suicide attempts. He was clearly not okay mentally. We reconnected in my early 20s and when I finally started to build my trust for him again he disappeared. He tried to reconnect with me a year later when he needed something. I haven't spoken to him since then. Edit. He attempted suicide. It's always when they want something. Aunt in the rich part of the family made my mother clean their bathrooms one day when she told them we couldn't afford food. Unlucky situation. Both parents unemployed within days, instead of just helping her out. They didn't even pay her, they gave her food they had prepared that day and some potatoes and oil. From that day on, my mother was so hurt and felt so humiliated I decided to pretend they don't even exist. Had a rich uncle who paid my cousin to do some landscaping work for him because the city was going to give him a citation at a business he owned. So my cousin, his stepdad and a friend wake up super early and go to war with basically a ponding area that turned into Jurassic Park. It was brutal backbreaking work that took them all day. They even left all the bag trash grass weeds out for display so my uncle could see just how much work they had to do. My uncle gave my cousin some folded money and took off. My cousin assumed it was a few hundred bucks. It ended up being twenty dollars. He apologized to the guys who helped him and bought them some beer. I cut out my mother's side of the family. Her sister and brother made it their personal goal to financially ruin my parents. Then the other sister piled on. All three of them had been borrowing money from my grandparents for years and when the other sister sold my grandparents house out from under them because they can't live on their own anymore my grandparents were appalled when they were told by my aunt that she was putting them in a home. So they lived with my parents instead and the other siblings accused my parents of taking their inheritance. They harassed, stalked, and vandalized my parents property until both grandparents were dead. I will never forgive them and hope their own children treat them as poorly as they treated my parents and grandparents. Wow they really were evil and greedy people, just saw their parents as a bank account. Mother was never really present. Even after my father died. Brother father died when I was not an adult. 
house was left to four of his sons. One brother conned his into signing the house over to him for loan purposes to fix the house up. Stole house. Another brother stole from me and my family with high regularity. Forgave him a bunch of times. Kept doing it so I gave up. Extended family non-existent. With all that being said I have a fantastic relationship with the last brother. I got the same thing with my mom though as an adult. Never really there but once my dad died and she still wasn't there I was like fuck this. It sucks so much because it feels like suddenly being a total orphan. They threatened my life and then reported me to my country's officials for being a runaway. I was 26, a heathen, a whore, and, I wish this was a joke, a witch. All are crimes in my country. So yes. I have nothing to do with them anymore. My parents reported me missing too, after I told them I was moving out when I finally turned 18. They were verbally, mentally and physically abusive. It was cult-like environment. First time I saw Turpin family case it made me realize I was not brought up normal. Hopefully you're in better health and have found happiness in life. My new stepfather in a drunken rage tried to joke me out because I did not agree with his views. My mother did nothing to stop it and took his side. 22 years later have not spoken to anyone in my family. It's so tough when one parent is abusive and the other one is desperate to keep the peace. It's not your job to unbrainwash your parents. My sister was cut off about 10 years ago after several incidents involving her spreading rumors about me at my work for a third time. She told one of my boss that I was a hard drug user, I never touch the stuff. She kept doing that after I warned her. I cut off the rest of my family when I confronted them about multiple historical events of physical abuse and torture from when I was a kid. They refused to talk about it and were verbally abusive about it. I cut them off about 5 years ago and my life has taken a positive turn since. That's rough equals my sister tried killing me, my dad, and both my dogs on Thanksgiving because I was driving 5 miles below the speed limit on a dark windy country road. She was in a hurry to get back to her boyfriend, drug dealer, which was why we headed back home the day of despite only getting there at like noon and it being a 4 hour drive back. So she grabbed the wheel and tried running us off the road. After the incident we pulled over at a gas station where she insisted she drive the rest of the way back despite having smoked two blunts of K2 while I was driving. When I declined to let her she punched my big dog. Then my dad stepped in and said he would drive, middle ground I guess, so she tried throwing my small dog out the window of the moving car. I disowned her that day and she still thinks that it's some kind of joke. Some people are just shit through and through. Glad you mad. Dad sexually abused sister. Mother and other sister chose his side. Yeah we don't talk much. What the fuck? They chose his side despite the action he did? My birth mother was totally unprepared for motherhood and considered me a threat to her relationship to my dad. She locked me in my room at 3 for several hours a day and hit me with spoons. In middle school she left over homecoming weekend to see her boyfriend. Dad was still married to her, and missed my freshman homecoming. She doesn't care about me at all. Has your father been better than your mother? Just stress. Every phone call. Every visit, holidays, events. Constantly berated, questioned and feuding. I didn't cut them off in the sense of no contact. I just stopped caring. I don't ask, I don't get involved. Phone calls last 3 minutes because I have nothing to share everything is good here. Holidays I eat and leave. And I'm too busy for random drop-ins because kids have sports and friends and I have hobbies. When they come to me and vent I simply respond in unique ways that they'll figure it out and I'm unsure what I do in their place. Perfect. I believe this is called grey rock, as in you become about as interesting as one. Good on you for protecting yourself. Grandmother told me that's what I get for having children out of wedlock when my infant son died. You eated her ass right out the front door, have not spoken to her in about 10 years. 
from what I've heard from an uncle she is dying of a brain tumor, could not happen to a more deserving person. My friend's mom used to beat the crap out of her and emotionally torture her stepson. When I heard she had cancer, I was like, oh, thank god it's her and not someone worth anything. Through no fault of our own, my mom and I became the black sheep of the family. We were excluded from family dinners, family get togethers, and family trips. We decided we liked it that way, and just let it happen. Akuna Matata Good thing you're together and she's a good person, unlike most of the cases here. I cut out my entire side of my mom's family after her funeral. I was 17. Her family had always been a difficult bunch. My mom had a stalker at the time of her death. He claimed to the family he was her fiancé. And they believed him over me. Despite the restraining order and proof of abuse, they chose that man over me. So I cut them out. The only contributing a $100 donation to the funeral costs really helped that decision also. She had 3 birth siblings and 12 adopted siblings, several aunts and uncles and cousins and they came up with $100? Fuck that and them. That was 8 years ago. Last I heard, her stalker spent Christmas with them. So my choice feels validated. This is nuts. I didn't, they did. I decided to leave Mormonism and they chose a church over me. Same. It sucks. Sorry that was your experience as well. I haven't cut off my family, but I have been cut off from a part of my family. When my father died, I was 10, my mother remarried within a year. My bio father's family cut me, my brother and little sister off because of that. I've seen my grandmother on that side once like 15 years later, right before she died a month later. Luckily my stepdad adopted us and became legally our dad and has treated us as his own every day of his life and still. My mom never remarried because she was done with that after my dad died who was her second husband but dad's family still cut us off. They never liked our mom so when dad died they completely stopped caring or trying. Same for my mom's siblings but in that case it was grandma who was the glue and as soon as she died everyone acted even more like the rest of the family doesn't exist. I grew up without uncles, aunts and cousins even though I have a few on both sides and because of our relatively large age gaps I also grew up mostly without siblings. Full siblings all from the same dad. Our parents just really took their time to have kids and I was the implant third child in their early 40s. My sister cut me off when I asked if she was engaged. Apparently it was incredibly rude and I ruined her engagement. The reason I asked, her and her boyfriend were taking a big trip. We had talked for months about the possibility that he would propose on the trip two weeks before they left, he showed her the ring he bought her. On the trip she posted a picture of a dinner and she had a big shiny diamond on her left ring finger. But I'm the asshole for asking. Edit, I have no idea what the logic behind this is. Why whole family can't figure it out. But let me give you some context. I have a social media account but never use it. Like ever. Her and my brother were having a pretty heated debate. My husband asked a pretty neutral question trying to clarify something she said, he wasn't a part of the conversation. She started insulting him, blocked him and blocked me who wasn't part of the conversation nor had even been on it in years. But she still has my brother who was the target of the heated debate. Ego reason. My uncle and aunt whom I lived with from the age of 15 to 19. They always treated me as an inconvenience even though they are the ones who suggested I went to live with them. They had me clean up after them and their kids. They got mad at me when I ate too much of their food caused me to have stunted growth and an eating disorder. Made fun of me for being depressed and always discouraged me from doing any type of extracurricular activity at school because they didn't want me to make their kids seem like mediocre losers. They overshared family secrets with me and basically made me feel like I had to share those same resentments towards other people in my family in order to be welcomed into their home. To this day, I still have trust issues with everyone in my life and I rarely allow myself to make new friends. 
my dad died the day before Father's Day. She who birthed me openly disregarded every one of his final wishes, up to and including the place of burial. Since then I've gone full scorched earth. Never mind the years of physical, psychological, and financial abuse mitted out to the both of us all our lives. I was prepared to forgive her up to that point. For him. No. She called my father weak for not making his wishes known to her, and stated that mental illnesses were a hoax, a crutch for the weak. I informed her right then and there that I was no longer her child, and she can rot in that miserable mausoleum she calls a house. I am organizing a proper memorial service the way dad wanted. I've also been making cover trips taking everything of sentimental value from dad's upstairs apartment when she hasn't been home, and I have opened a separate bank account preparing for the day she dies, I have dad exhumed, and buried in the place he loved and wanted. I will make everything right that she has wronged, mark my words. She is dead to me, and anyone who stands with her is an enemy. I had a baby when I was 16. Because I was so young, I had to continue living with my parents along with the baby. When I turned 18, my parents encouraged me to go off to college and said they would look after the baby while I was gone and then, I could have my child when I finished school. Of course, I visited my child all the time, but my parents and my sister started a smear campaign against me, stating that I was a terrible mother who abandoned her child. I knew things were being said, but I didn't realize it came from the people who were closest to me. I didn't really find out the level of cruelty until I finished school and wanted to resume care for my child. My parents got a lawyer and threatened to make my life hell if I didn't walk away. I was broke, young and naive so I walked away. It's one of the biggest regrets of my life but I cut them off. I had to for my own sanity. My. That is so disgusting and I'm so, so sorry that this happened to you and that you were deeply betrayed in this manner. Happy to hear that you and your child are back together again. To put it short and simple. Going through basic training was a fucking vacation compared to my childhood. My instructors would scream in my face every day. But at least I knew they actually cared under their cruelty. There was method to the madness to make us into soldiers. They were polite compared to my parents. I'm imagining that they are either confused at how little they can move you, or they've seen it enough that they know exactly why that is. My father knows exactly how to hurt me emotionally and does it with a disturbing amount of glee. His family is convinced he's a good person that will move heaven and earth for me. Yeah, it got like that around the tail end for me. He was addicted to his anger and was tearing shit apart so he could have some semblance of control over the life he started to mess up. Grandmother would quote scripture and refuse to let up on it and would invite him over when I visited and take his side while claiming she was neutral. I just walked out and was basically done with it. Grandmother has stopped but basically feels like she's written me off. But honestly, I'm over it. Didn't completely cut them off but I'm extremely estranged. Mother was very neglectful of me growing up, drinking problem and depression. Would rather buy cigarettes than food so I was hungry all the time. Didn't pay rent so I was scared and embarrassed because landlord would approach me on the street. Left me alone for long hours when I was young and I got raped and her first words were don't tell your brother. He won't know how to deal with it. Suffice to say I knew I needed to take care of myself and stop letting them hurt me. Mum told me she hoped I off myself, most recent thing. Stepdad was a pedo. The rest hated that I wasn't mild mannered and placid, and also wouldn't let me talk about being lesbian to anyone outside the family because of embarrassment. Big hugs, friend. I'm in the same boat. I don't even refer to them as mom or stepdad, just their first names or biological mother and the pedophile. The last straw was the amount of hate in her eyes when I decided to be the bigger man and come back to apologize after a fight. I just realized I didn't have to fucking put up with it if I didn't want to we could either both be miserable all the time, or I could cut her off and only she would be. 
I cut off everyone in my father's family after I came forward about him abusing me sexually for years. My uncle suggested it was a bad dream my grandmother said it was normal for a man to get erections at his daughter. That's not all he did in the slightest. My auntie told me to go to the police so a mob wouldn't come to him and then helped him leave the country to stay at her house with her two young daughters and his father defended him and tried to convince my mother to meet my father in person. He would have hurt or killed her, no doubt in my mind. This man horrifically abused me and my family only to be defended tooth and nail. It hurts not seeing my little cousins but if I'd rather go blind than ever have to see my father again. On the brighter side, since cutting him out of my life I've moved in with my boyfriend who I was dating in secret and helped me to come forward about what my father was doing. I've grown closer.